Are you ready to run your half marathon? I have Coach Kat here with me from our Healthy Runner coaching team, and we're going to talk about what you can do the week before your half marathon to maximize your performance on race day. Coach Kat, welcome back to the show. For those new listeners in our audience, I will give you a brief bio. Coach Cat is a run coach, a personal trainer, a fitness instructor, a engineer by trade, a scientist, a farmer, a Marvel movie lover. Um, those are just uh, a few of her gifts. But Coach Cat, thank you uh, for jumping on here today to share some half marathon race tips for our listeners. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's raining in Connecticut at this time, and I actually do like the rain, so it's been raining a lot. I know how much you love to run in the rain, and yeah, I've been running in the rain for like the last three days in a row, it seems. It is very calming, isn't it? It keeps the temperature cool. It keeps my body temperature cool. That's one of the main reasons I like, because I don't like to be hot. If anyone needs to know anything about me, I am a winter runner, solitaire runner. So winter's the best time for me. Nobody's out there. Nobody except the crazies are out there and the healthy runner people. But <laughs> Yeah, no, winter, uh, cool running. I know you like that. And I love it. right now at the time of this recording, we are kind of approaching like fall half marathon season. And I know this is a topic um, that we get a lot of questions from our clients. And I know you work with a lot of our clients um, throughout the country and the world, quite frankly, on really training for a half marathon. And, you know, just to give us a little bit of backstory, um, do you mind just sharing kind of some of your you know, either race history or kind of why you love to do what you do from a coaching standpoint and who you love to work with? Well, I, my racing background is varied. I've done many half marathons. I've done nine full marathons, 150K, two three-person relay, 95-mile relay with Coach Lou. Shout out, Coach Lou. <laughs> um and I've done multiple endurance races. And by endurance races, I mean 10 to 12 hour races where you, it, you're, you're on your feet running or walking or hiking because it's mostly trail for, um, for a long duration of time, basically. I like the road running. I've transitioned into trail running and that's what I'm doing on my races, but I still love road races. When I coach, I, I love coaching anybody, especially love beginners at my Wallingford Y. I'm the couch to 5k program, um, coach. So I'm very familiar with beginners all the way up to people who want to run ultras. Um, and I, I also, there was a podcast I did on mental mindset and stress management that I've done. And so I'm very familiar with maybe the anxiety or the nerves that come the week or even a week, two weeks, a week before any race, but especially half marathons. So hopefully I will take some of that stress out of your, out of your repertoire. Hopefully. Yeah, no. And I know you've helped many athletes um, run successful half marathons and feel, you know, strong and confident. And that's really what we're looking for today is right to set someone up to feel confident going into the race and really executing what they did in training, right? Because it is the training that really sets someone up for the ability to finish the half marathon or finish it with a time that they're going to be proud of, right? And meet the goals um, for the race itself. And I think really, especially as a beginner half marathon, or you don't really think about all these things. So I think these tips that you're going to share are going to be super helpful um, for many listening to this who are running a half marathon this season or, or next season, right? So this is going to be one that you're going to want to go back to. And um, a couple of re resources that I think would be super helpful um, for folks is number one, our race day blueprint that we actually have as a free download, what will really get you prepared for what to do before race day. And this is kind of shares kind of 10 proven tactics for a great race day. Also with a race ready checklist, 
to make sure that you check off all the things that you need for your race, as well as a race day game plan. So it's been a super helpful resource. It's something that we do and go through on all of our kind of race strategy calls with our clients before their race. So make sure you guys get your download. I will share the link in the um, show notes to this episode. But if you go to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com forward slash race, you will get that. And then we've had a bunch of half marathon specific episodes that if you're tuning into this and maybe you're not ready to run your race yet, and maybe you're just thinking about, hmm, should I sign up for a half marathon? Well, we've covered that on episode 193 with Coach LaToya on determining whether you are ready to take that next step and actually sign up and race a half marathon. Maybe you're wondering about like, how do I actually train for a half marathon? Then you're going to want to tune into episode 191 with Coach Whitney, where we covered like top five half marathon training mistakes to avoid. And then I will also mention our kind of um, all-inclusive, really meeting our whole Healthy Runner coaching team episode was really going back, um, way back in the archives. And I will drop that link in uh, the show notes because I don't have it handy for me. Oh no, I do. Episode 54, way back when, um, where the whole team, all five of us actually shared half marathon training tips. That was like a super in-depth episode, um, really getting input from our whole team. It's actually our most listened to episode on the podcast. So you might want to go all the way back in the archives to episode 54 to check out that episode as well. If you are here for half marathon specific content, um, those would be super helpful for you. And really in this episode, what we really wanted to tackle was like this topic of a week before your race, like what should you be doing? And what coach Kat's going to do is she's going to educate us on like what we should be doing early in that week. And then we're going to break it into like midweek and then late week, like right before your race, what are the things that you should really be focusing on in order to maximize, um, your performance on race day. So ready to get started here, coach. I'm ready. All right. Yeah. So what are the things that we should be thinking about earlier in the week? We're like a week out. Maybe we've run our last long run in our training. And now it's like leading up into our race week. Okay. There's a couple of things I like to do at the beginning of the week. So I'm not stressed about them. One, go to the website, check your email um, about race day or the day before packet pickup. That's important because some races, you can't pick your packets up the day of the race. Some of the larger ones, some you have to do the day before, some you can do that morning of. So make sure you know when you can get your packet because that's going to be key on eliminating stress. If you can get it ahead of time, get it ahead of time. If you can do it race day morning and that works for you, go for it but make sure you know where you're going. Check the parking situation. Is the parking situation not, where is the parking? Make sure you find that before you do all this. Have your game plan going into that day with the stuff you don't want to worry about the night before or the next day. Your parking situation, packet pickup. Those are two things I like to do first. Then, even though you might have checked this before, go onto the course website find the water stops. This is going to be key because this will let you know in your mind, are the water stops, do they have what you usually take? Do they have, if you use, you can, noon, Gatorade, what are they offering? Is it the same as what you have? If so, that might eliminate carrying some stuff, but it'll also help you gauge your fueling. And what I mean by that is if you take a, a gel, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm just going to do, this is not necessarily what everybody does. If you take a gel at 30 minutes and you usually like water with it, well, check where the water stops are. If the water stops are at two and mile two and four, you could probably hold off on the gel. Maybe if, if you're a quicker runner, probably hold off onto water stop four right before it. If not, take it at mile two. So you have to kind of have in your mind what your pace is. At this point, you probably have a basic idea. 
And you can then gauge the water stops with when you take your gels or your fuel or whatever you take. And if you're a couple of minutes off, don't stress about it. I, 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 th- that's not something you need to be stressed about. But if you don't want to carry all your water with you, then that is one way to kind of eliminate carrying a lot of stuff. If you can coordinate your fueling with your water stops on the course. And that's something you can do the, the week before. You can even do that two weeks before. Um, you know, you could do that as far out as you want, but this is something that we don't think about usually until the week of the race. So that's why I'm bringing that up. Um, mm-hmm. So awesome. let me just interject there for a second, Coach, because you probably honestly um, have had many people listening to this right now and we're like, why <laughs> in the heck would I ever have a gel at mile two or mile four? Like I never take a gel or need anything until I'm running for an hour. Um, right. Like there were probably a lot of people who just like stopped in their tracks and were like, what is this, you know, coach talking about here? Um, so those that are new to our podcast and new to really learning about race day fueling and nutrition, um, you know, the strategy is to fuel early and often. And that's kind of the key to actually having energy at the end of your race and not hitting what we call the quote unquote wall. Um, so yeah, I know there are many people who, especially if you're training for your first half marathon or your second, and you're like, I never fuel, or maybe you did a half marathon in your twenties and now you're running your first one after kids, maybe in your thirties or your forties. And you're like, I never used to fuel for a half marathon and I completed it. You know, I got through it. Um, yeah, fueling early and often is going to be key. Um, so even though you won't feel like you need the fuel, you will be happy that you did fuel early when you get to mile 10, when you get to mile 12. Um, so just wanted to kind of clarify that point. But from what I'm hearing so far is we're, we're thinking about logistics of, you know, when is kind of packet pickup? I am definitely a early packet pickup guy. It, it is man, I like to have that thing in my hands before race day. Like, I don't want to have to think about one more thing to do like the morning of the race. Um, so I always, I don't even care if I have to drive far. I would rather get it out of the way the day before the two days before pick up my packet. And then, so I know I have it. So I would highly recommend that to many people. And yeah, parking is a great thing to not only know where it is, but even I'll scout it out at packet pickup, right? Like mm-hmm. I'll go and see, okay, where am I going to park so I can visually see and be like, okay, what are the options? What else is around? Is there other lots around that if this one's full then I can't get a spot here? Or how do I think this is going to you know, view if you're doing a large half marathon, it's a big race. Like, how is this going to look on race day when it's like filled with people? Um, so yeah, I'm a, a big fan of, of knowing the logistics and, and thinking about this, like you said, a week before, like yeah. early in that week, um, you know, get it, get it really thought, thought, think it out and, and have a plan essentially. Right. Nice. So what else do we want to be thinking about early, uh, in the week? Your clothes. And I know that a lot of people wait until the night before and lay all their stuff out. Well, that's all well and good until you go and grab your shorts and you realize they're in the wash or they're in the (laughs) hamper. And this has happened. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, oh, yeah. And you're washing your clothes the night before race because you forgot. Eliminate that. Lay everything out on the Monday or Tuesday of the race. If you can't find something, check your laundry. Check the washing machine. You know, that lone sock that disappears, it's probably in the dryer. But that way, it's already laid out, you know, and you don't have to worry about it. If you have to wash your clothes, you can wash your clothes. And that dovetails into kind of don't get obsessive with checking your weather, but check the weather and have a backup set of clothes if the weather is going to be drastic. So I like, <laughs> I'm overprepared, but I have one if it's hotter, one if it's colder. And I lay that both of the sets out. So that again, I'm not running around. If the temperature changes quickly, 
I don't want to have to be looking for stuff. So I make sure I have two outfits ready to go, all washed. And women, that includes your sports bra and underwear. Just make sure it's there because there's nothing worse than trying to find it and it's in the laundry basket. It's happened. So I learned the hard way to make sure you lay out your clothes early in the week so that you know if where they are. I mean, it, it's just practical. Right. No, that makes sense. And I was even actually thinking about this for myself where my race is until next weekend, but I was already thinking about that actually this morning, Kat, when it was raining <laughs> and I had my hat, my, I had my spark healthy runner hat uh, for the rain. And I was like, you know what? I need to make sure I put this thing near my race day outfit just in case it's raining on race day. Uh, I'm going to be w- taking this hat with me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, I already have my stuff packed for my next race. Like I know exactly what I'm going to wear. Yep. Two much two options. Oh, yeah. So it it's already there. So yeah. That helps. Um, and the other thing you can do is if you're listening to music, have your playlist set to go. Have that all set, tweak it. You know, it'll you don't have to do this, of course, at the beginning of the week, but this eliminates, say you have a job or you're a parent. And something comes up the night before or the day before you have an emergency with your kid at work, you do, you want all that to already be dealt with so that you can handle that emergency because they do come up and, you know, maybe you have to work late or things don't go according to plan. You, you don't want to be waiting the night before to do all this. It, 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 it's unnecessary stress. In my opinion, if you thrive on stress, go ahead. <laughs> but I, I, and that, that's midweek. I'm going to talk about that your, at the midweek point. Your your opinion is is well taken and has been felt by <laughs> uh, by myself because yeah. that's probably the thing I always leave last, and I always tell myself I'm going to do it earlier in the week, and it never gets done. Cat, it I never know. gets done, and I, I here agree. I am the night before, sometimes the morning of the race. I'm playlist. playing around with my freaking playlist. And I'm like, are I you know. joking? Why didn't you have this done already, Dwayne? I, I, I don't know. I've done so much. I finally learned this lesson. And I, because every morning I'm like, why isn't it my playlist? Crap. I wanted to, or sorry. I wanted to download a different rate, a song. Or why isn't this here? Why is this in the sequence? It's every time. So I've learned beginning of the week, do the playlist. Yeah, no, I love that and tip. I guarantee nobody's going to do it until the day before but I'm just <laughs> suggesting do it now. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to set a goal for myself. That I'm going to have mine done. You. <laughs> I'll text you the next morning after the, uh, the morning of the race. Did you get your playlist done? So All right. Any other tips early in the week? No, that covers okay. the first part. <laughs> All right. So now we're transitioning to kind of midweek here. Yes. Um, what are the things that we really need to do to prepare for race day? Okay. Now we have to start moving into the mental part of it. Analyze if you're having anxiety versus stress, you know, if you're really getting panicked and it's causing you to have some issues midweek, you need to talk to a coach, a fellow runner. You need to find a way to relax, whether that's going outside easy runs. You know, you, you need to distinguish between having anxiety versus like a little bit of stress, which is very normal before a race. And you want to get that under control in at least midweek because that can affect your sleep. And you you may not be able to sleep the night before, uh, but ironically with me, I'm always stressed and I sleep like a baby the night before a race, but you you want to make sure that you're getting that quality sleep mid week, because maybe toward the end of the week, like the night before, you're not going to be able to sleep, which is fine. As long as you are refreshed and you've gotten enough sleep in the middle of the week, that is something that people underestimate. You know, they don't realize that that midweek sleep is going to be important for the, the, the race, because again, that night before, maybe you'll have nerves, you won't be able to sleep. Um, and it's never too early to start hydrating more in my personal opinion. I like to start on that Wednesday or Thursday. If my race is on a Saturday with adding a little bit more, nothing crazy, but I'll get into the habit of drinking more. And you want to make sure you're following your plan. 
I cannot stress enough. And, and um, as a coach, you, you, there's nothing like that makes me more nervous than seeing one of my runners do more than they should in the middle of the week, a couple of days before their race, because they're like, I'm feeling great. I have all this energy. No, no, no. Follow the plan. <laughs> don't, d- don't, don't go off. I know you have a lot of downtime. That is the purpose. You will still have easy runs. You might even have a tempo run at the beginning of the week. Follow the plan. Do not deviate. This is not the week to deviate. Do not deviate from the plan unless if you need more recovery time, if you're not feeling well or something, err on the side of caution. Feel free to not do as much, but don't go over. Don't do not do a mile more. Everyone's like, it's just a mile. I'm like, no. Um uh, sh- shutter right there. But that's the midweek that you're going to want to consider. Stick to the plan. Don't don't let the midweek anxiety overrule you because that will come back to bite you in the race. Yeah. And uh, for those who aren't working with a coach or maybe um, they're not even following a training plan online, um, you know, this is the point. The whole purpose here is we're tapering and actually decreasing the mileage, maybe decreasing one of your run days, um, usually not more than that, but still having you run roughly the same number of days, maybe one less, but decreasing the mileage because the miles you're going to actually do this week are not going to be the same than you did when you were peaking before, you know, during your half marathon training. So, you know, let's just say you were peaking at 30 miles a week for your half marathon race. You know, you're probably the week of the race going to be running in the mid twenties in total counting the 13.1 on race day. Um, and that's purposeful because you actually want to go into the race with fresh legs, fully tapered, having all of this energy And if you were able to do it on tired legs, right, during training, your longest long run, most mileage in your week on race day with you being fresh, like that's the whole point. So you can actually give more effort and be able to have all this energy and be able to put forth like your best effort on race day. Um, So yeah, couldn't agree more to not add in extra miles now that would yes. definitely be counterproductive yes <laughs> follow the plan follow the plan <laughs> come on guys <laughs> work with me that's a personal shout out to all my runners just just <laughs> keep an eye. i i'm i have some runners who races are coming up but i'm, I'm keeping an eye on you guys closely coach cat will be morning. watching <laughs> i will be watching <laughs> All right. Any other things uh, midweek that we should not, think about? Not really. I mean, yeah. they're, they're, we're going to talk more about like the day before and the end mm-hmm. week coming up um, next. Yep. There's only okay. so many days. Yeah. Before. If I could add in, I would just say midweek that I like to start um, thinking about at this point. I know you mentioned hydration. Yes. Um, here is usually where I start to really transition my nutrition from you know, higher fiber foods and like a lot of like raw vegetables where I really start to transition from, you know, whether you're having, you know, salads for lunch or you're having like snacks of raw carrots and raw celery or raw, whatever vegetables. Um, Here's where I, I try to really transition to more of the starches and, you know, having crackers, having potato chips, having, right, like those snack carb foods. Um, And you don't need to go crazy here. Um, If you are running a half marathon for the first time and you've heard people talk about like carbo loading, like don't don't get crazy. You don't need to like, you know, have huge bowls of pasta. You don't need that for your half marathon. Um, So... But just think about changing the composition of your food and maybe, you know, starting to not have, you know, higher fat and higher protein and try to add in more starchier carbs because that's going to really fill those reserves and your glycogen, um, which is how we store carbs. And then we use that glycogen for energy on race day. So I like to try to start working the GI system on, uh, you know, this midweek point of, you know, transitioning like the high fibery, uh, you know, vegetables and fruits out of my diet. 
All right. So now we're getting to late week, right? So race day is getting closer. Um, so what do we really need to think about, you know, a day or two before race day? Check your email. Last minute instructions from race directors. And, and I know this because I'm on a race committee for a Y, October 8th. Anyway, um, make sure you check your email to see if there's any last minute changes. And sometimes it's as simple as packet pickup hours change a little bit, like a half hour, um, or they're, they've added another parking area or some nothing major usually changes last minute, but I've been on races where they have changed the course route due to hurricanes, flooding, you know, and they usually will send the email out um, ahead of time to let people know. So you want to check your spam as well. Check your spam folder because sometimes they go right to spam folder and you don't know it. Um, If you don't have that, you can always check the website, but usually a race director will send any changes directly to the participants. Um, that's something I highly recommend you you keep an eye on. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And even honestly, you know, race cancellations, like, you yes. know, especially if you're doing a destination half marathon um, and you're not aware of some storm that's yeah. happening, right? And, you know, they wound up canceling the race because power went out in the town or right. There were trees down. And so definitely, you know, making sure that you are staying up to date, um, checking your inbox and not ignoring it. Um, all right. What else do we want to think about? Now I I am going to bring up the food aspect because for me, it's a very tricky balance. Um, for those who know, I struggle with race nutrition I know what to do, but my stomach rebels a lot on my longer duration races. We're not at that. We're we're talking about a half marathon, but my best advice from running all my halves, fulls, everything is stick with what you normally eat with the exception, of course, of the fiber, but don't go crazy. Like don't, if you don't eat pasta, don't eat pasta the night before. Don't add anything new, even if you think it's a you know, you need more carbs. And I'm I'm telling this to women because this has come up. A lot of times women freak out about eating more because of the weight gain. I understand the mentality during taper week, you're not working out enough. So your mentality may be to cut back on the food. Don't. That will come back to haunt you. But I know there are a lot of maybe men as well, but my experience has been with women is that we run And when we're not running, we don't want to eat as much because of the calorie and weight gain. And we're terrified of that. A lot of women, not everybody. And they tend to cut food during taper week. That is something you don't want to do. It's hard mentally to not do that sometimes, but you don't want to because you will not have a good performance. And my, I I can't even explain what I do for pre-races because I can tell you what I eat, brown rice with dried cranberries. That's my pre-race. And I will eat that a lot, like starting six o'clock and all the way through almost the night because I need to get, I know people say stop eating at a certain time. No, for me, that doesn't work. So what I'm saying is do what works for you. Don't mess any, don't, don't add anything crazy You can add your crackers. You can add your starches. I like brown rice. Just for me, that works Um, with like the dried cranberries, which doesn't have too much fiber and just enough to give it that little bit of sweet flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, That's something I'm going to say, make sure and, and even practice that meal the week before, you know, the Friday before. Not not the Friday night, but not the night before your race, but the week before. Try that meal. See how that sits in your stomach, um, and test it out. But don't go crazy. You know, don't don't add a whole bunch of food because it's going to sit potentially in your stomach the next day, and you're not going to feel great about it. Um, right. Yeah. No. Is I- a better indicator of this, but I do want to say. 
you hear a lot of things about don't eating after a certain time. It sits in your, do what works for you. I've gone off the charts, off the wall, out of the box with my fueling situation. Um, so if anyone, I'm sure they can talk to Brooke, but if any of my clients have, uh, I'm more than welcome to tell them what I do. Um, what works for you is really something I want to emphasize. No one strategy will work with that extra food intake. Just know you should have more food. Yeah, no, I think that's such a great point that what works for you. And if this is your first half marathon or you're like, eh, I've only run one half marathon, but I don't know if I fueled properly, right? Like this is why you practice this in training. And yeah. so those longest long runs, when you ran double digit long runs in your training, this is what you should have been doing um, the night before those long runs, right? So you know, like, hey, I can have brown rice with cranberries or like Dwayne has, you know, he, he likes a nice little turkey sandwich and, you know, not too much of the turkey, but nice white bread. <laughs> Nice little soft it's roll, so superstitious right? Too. It's like you have to have that same. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or I, baked potato I, I has worked as well. I've done yeah. a baked potato with some grilled chicken. Um, oh, again, not too much of the protein, just a little bit, um, which will help with some of the absorption of the carbs. Yeah. But like those are my two staples. I tried pasta earlier in my running race career. And it never felt great for yeah. me, Kat. Like, you know, everyone's like, and oh, yeah, Italian. I got to have pasta. Right. And in Italian, I'm like, yeah, let's do some pasta. But no. it just felt so heavy in my stomach. It does. And because I didn't normally eat pasta on like a daily basis, you know. So those are the things that work for me. Kat shared what works for her. It might be something different for you, but that's why you have to practice in training. And so unfortunately, like if you're listening to this, like, literally the week of your half marathon and you haven't practiced anything, try to think about like, what are the safest foods that you know you have? Like, tr just try to think bland and don't, you know, nothing crazy, nothing spicy, nothing no fried. Mexican. Yeah. No like spicy Mexican food, <laughs> no fried foods. Cause that's not going to sit well in your stomach. Um, but yeah, like some people have like an iron stomach and they have like Pizza I'm the night before and I'm so jealous fries. Of you, I'm like, what? How do you do yeah, that? No, um, I do this. But I do find like as we age, right? So as we get into our like 40s and beyond, I do find it, it gets trickier to find out what does work for you on these longer duration runs. So really like the half marathon and above. Um, so this is where practice definitely um you want to implement that. And yeah, I would just reiterate, you don't need to go crazy. Don't think about like eating more than you normally eat. Just change, you know, the types of foods that you're eating and don't like overstuff yourself or pig out. Cause I've been there before too. I eat too much and I was like, oh, this is not good. And it's like, I need to like hold myself back before race. Cause I'm like, oh, I want to eat more. Those potato chips are really good. Like let's eat more. Like, no. Um, you know, portion control here. Don't like go, you know, pigging out. <laughs> All right. What else do we want to think about, uh, you know, late week? Not too much more. I mean, I, I mentioned sleep, but now is the time to um, get some sleep. If you have the ability, not everybody does on some of my destination races or like when I did Remacon, I take the day off the day of my, if my race is on a Saturday, I take that Friday off so I can get a little bit more sleep because I'm at work at 530 in the morning. So that means I'm getting up really early. That's not feasible for a lot of people. I understand. I, I save my vacation days. And on those very long runs, if it is possible, if it's on a Sunday, you're golden. But if your race is on a Saturday, if you can just get that extra hour of sleep in the morning, you know, not have to get up and go to work, that does help sometimes. But that's not, I understand that's not an option for everybody. Um, but make sure you're getting the quality sleep that if your race is Saturday, Thursday night, and the night before. Um, but again, I find that just taking the day off really does help me mentally, you know, get that extra hour of sleep that I can't get when I'm at work. 
So, but not an option for many people, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. So if it's not an option for you, definitely uh, get to bed sooner the night before, right? Like really prioritize and make that a goal of yours. Like I am going to get to bed by 9 p.m., 10 p.m., whatever Turn it is. Turn your cell phone off. Yeah. Turn, don't get drawn into the, the electronic. Turn it off. So you, 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 you don't understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that blue screen thing is so real. You know, I, I've unfortunately discovered Kindle Unlimited. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So making sure you're prioritizing that sleep, you know, really like two nights before. Yeah. Ideally, if you could take off of work the day before for a Saturday race. Um, yeah, that is, that is a very good thing. I actually prioritized that this year where I actually did, uh, take off on, on Friday before my race weekend. But, um, it is because I've been there before too. And if you have a job where you're on your feet a lot, yeah. not ideal <laughs> to be a, a Friday, even if you're racing on Sunday, right. To like be on your feet all day, that um, me. you know, having fresh legs and, you know, trying to take as many sitting breaks as you can throughout your day, I would say is a really good thing. Um, late week as well. Race expos. If you go to a big race and they have those race expos, don't be on your feet all day. It is not the, the day before is not the day to really like if you're in a new town, it is not the day to really spend a lot of time sightseeing or the race expos. You can do a little bit of that, but but be careful of how because it's still time on your feet. And I am amazed at how much just walking around will, will tire my feet out. <laughs> So keep that in mind if you have a big half marathon, some of these big, big ones where they do have race expos the day before, you know, or you're going to a different state and you want to explore, explore after the race, build in some time for that. Or if you're going really early, but I would say be careful of how much time you are on your feet. That reminded me. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And even like most of these expos for these bigger races are in like convention centers on like cement floor. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes you just get lost in there where you're in there for so long and then you didn't plan accordingly like water, you didn't plan snacks. And now you're like maybe lost in there for two to three to four hours Yeah, and, and you haven't eaten or drink anything and you've been yeah. on your feet the whole time. Not ideal the day yeah. before your race uh, nope. whatsoever. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And we've all been there. Like, this is why the coaches are laughing because yeah. you name it, one of us, probably more, I've done almost every mistake, but one of us have done one of these things that we're telling you not to do. That is why we're telling you be careful or what, because we've all been there. Trust me, all of us have been there. <laughs> yeah. The worst for me was when we did the Disney half Oh, and it was God. my wife's first half marathon. The expo was amazing. Like I loved it. Cause it was like, wow, just seeing like the latest and greatest products out there for running. So I'm like all geeking out. I'm seeing all the different <laughs> shoes, seeing all the different products out there. But yeah, we were like, and then there's all these photo spots. So it was just, we were probably in there at minimum three hours. I think it was closer to four. And like I said, I just remember like starving. Luckily they had some like a snack area in there. Yeah. And I was like, man, we got to get one of those pretzels. pretzels. <laughs> um, I was like, right to the pretzel. nice soft pretzel. Yes. I let me get that. <laughs> I was like, he's going to say pretzels. Popcorn can work too, but pretzels are the golden. It's amazing how runners. Yeah. <laughs> Just, and that one was a tough one too, because you had to like walk so much just to even get in the expo. Like, okay. you know, you took a shuttle and then you walked, literally we walked for like a half mile just to get in like the ESPN convention center. I never and then you're walking all throughout and then you're walking a half mile back out and then you get bussed back to your resort, which you probably got to walk another half mile. So yeah, it was a lot of walking. <laughs> that is one I, I, I will probably not never do. do. <laughs> Those of you who are running the Disney half this year. Hopefully let's meet up. I will be at uh, Disney again four years later from when we last did it. I will be running the dopey. Uh, my wife will be doing the half. My daughter Olivia will be doing the 10K and the 5K. And my daughter Gabby is going to run her first ever race <laughs> and do the 5K with the three of us. So That's it'll be fun. <laughs> we'll have some fun. We're we're big Disney family. So we'll have fun down there. So if you are running Disney this year in January, uh, shoot me a message. 
we'll definitely do. We have a bunch of our clients um, who will do a, some yes. type of meetup. We'll do a healthy runner meetup uh, down there in Orlando. So hit me up, send me a message, and I would love to meet a podcast listener down in Orlando. Any other tips, Kat, or is that everything that you were thinking week before half marathon? Pretty much. That's all. Just have fun with it. You're going to be nervous. That's a hundred percent normal, you know, but take as much as you can control, take as much of the external factors that you can control and control them. Don't let them control you. So the playlist, the clothing, get rid of that. Take all those stressors away. And then if things come up, handle them. But hopefully you've gotten rid of a lot of the, the what I call stressors that just add undue stress and unnecessary stress to you um, and have fun with it. You know, enjoy it, that feeling, you know, go with it. Yeah. And if we can kind of, as we come down the final stretch here, if you don't mind, if I ask you, um, you know, what do you think is like the one <laughs> misconception about half marathon preparation um, that most people have? What would that be? Um, I think most people either don't think about it. The misconception is I don't have to worry about it. It's just like a regular run. And they don't prepare enough mm-hmm. more than the people who, who like me have everything done. I think a lot of times people are like, Oh, this is just going to be like a regular race or, or this is just going to be like another run for me. They don't necessarily realize how much they should be preparing that week of with these tips. I, I find that the people who plan ahead of time, they're usually okay. But the ones who, don't take that race week seriously. You know, they almost are like, oh, I got this. You know, I'm not even going to think about it till the morning of. That's a misconception. You really need to think about this, whether it's a big or a small race. Yeah, planning is essential. And I hope, you know, you've gotten that out of today's episode and all of Coach Cat's tips is you need to be intentional. And, you know, that will help you, number one, calm your nerves. And number two, really allow you to execute like the race that you want to execute. And we didn't even really talk much about strategy, but in that free race day blueprint that I mentioned earlier, we outline a race day strategy for a half marathon. So if you download that, you can get the strategy. And I would even say like, that's what you want to be even thinking about earlier in the week of like, what is going to be your strategy? So you're not like trying to quote unquote, memorize it and like cram before an exam the night before or the morning of, and be like, what am I doing uh, for the first three miles? What pace will I be running? Like you've already done all this planning and you know, you'll see like, we have that race ready checklist. We have the race day game plan. And a lot of the tips that coach cat shared, you know, you're going to see a lot of you know, the gear that we recommend, you know, runners bring on race day, it's a checklist. So it's like, you can't forget something, whether it's, you know, putting chapstick on your eyebrows. If you think I'm crazy, um, you're going to have to check out the blueprint and say, you know, why you put chapstick on your eyebrows to prevent the sweat from going in your eyes, or whether it is, you know, remembering your hat, if it's going to be a sunny day, a rainy day, um, or your sunscreen, right? Coach cat. I know you're big on that, uh, with your sunscreen. Um, Oh God. Yeah. Sunscreen. (laughs) I always have my hat. You notice that there's very few times, except when I'm at work, I don't have a hat on. I have so many baseball hats. I I couldn't even tell. And I wear them all. Um, I have two specific. I wear for my races, one on shorter durations, one on longer durations. I'm very superstitious. I don't know about some, I am a very superstitious runner. I will wear all the same hats. That's it. And when I haven't done well, I'm like, okay, this hat is going away. We're never wearing it again. <laughs> You're same retiring it. Outfits. Yep. <laughs> I've, I've thrown away outfits for races. So, you know, uh, side point, I'm very superstitious with my race, with my running stuff. So I make sure it's ready the day, the week before. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. And hopefully this has been helpful for you guys as you've been listening. Um, you know, if you really want to have more of a personalized 
kind of half marathon strategy, that's what we cover in our coaching program um, with Coach Cat or any of the coaches on our team. Um, or if you're really looking for like a structured guidance and training program where we really set these out for you and practice them during training and give you the mental mindset tips to be able to overcome some of the hardships that happen during race day. Um, and you want to implement that, you can learn more about our signature coaching program. Uh, check out the link in the show notes or just go to learn.sparkhealthyrunner.com and uh, to learn more about that. And yeah, I, I really appreciate you coming on today, Kat. I know this was kind of something that we put together um, somewhat last minute as we were thinking about, hey, you know what? What really can we provide value to runners who are looking for information right now? What's like front of mind? And we know there are a lot of you right now who are going to be racing a half marathon. Uh, so hopefully these tips were helpful for you as you prepare for your half marathon. And if your half marathon isn't for a couple of weeks from now, this is like something you're going to want to like copy the link, like save it so you can go back. Like I love my notes function in my phone and that's what I do. I like save episodes and put them there and it's like, okay, Dwayne, go back to this, you know, the week before your half marathon or go back to this yeah. um, at different points. So kind of save it. I think this would be a, a helpful resource as well as the download um, for the race day blueprint. But thanks as always, Coach Cat. I appreciate you sharing all of your knowledge and wisdom with us today. Anytime. I love it. Yeah. And thank you guys for listening, uh, whether you're watching uh, on YouTube or you were listening to the podcast. Um, as always, like, let's maintain a strong mind, a strong body, and just keep running, just like Coach Cat's shirt says right now. Until next time. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.